Kings of Hyrule is my probably most surprising game of the year. And not like game of the year, like game of the year, GOTY 2019. What I'm trying to say, it's probably the most surprising game I played this year of 2019. I didn't really know what to expect from it. I kind of didn't see anything until E3 previews of it. Didn't watch any gameplay of it. Did not know it was based off an indie game. And it was just a, like technically some people are saying it's just a reskin of an indie game, but still I had no clue going into this game. And honestly, it was probably the first Zelda I've enjoyed for a long time, probably since Link Between Worlds. I know I'm sorry, Skyward Sword people, and I'm sorry, I'm definitely not sorry for you guys, Breath of the Wild people, but. I would have to say Cadence of Hyrule is definitely up there and super memorable and the fact that it was so unique and such a cool twist on uh, the way Zelda is played that it really it kind of hit me home it was it was a cool way to see 2d sprites updated and just how the Zelda formula can be added to different styles of games and just enjoyed by you know almost anybody now while my indie experience may not be vast and most of the indie games i have played are the mainstream indie games which is i guess ironic in itself so you know cuphead hat in time celeste shovel knight etc i do have to say that not knowing what this game was about and not you know not knowing what to expect and having no expectations actually at all uh, I would say Cadence of Hyrule is a game I think not only all Zelda fans should pick up, but something every Switch owner should at least play or attempt to play, I, I guess. Uh, it's, just, it's just something that everybody should, like has to has to look into. It, it's such an underrated gem, like I'm already singing its praises and I haven't even gone over the review yet. Cadence of Hyrule, so to get you into the game, Cadence of Hyrule starts you off playing as Cadence, who is that third girl that you see in the picture next to Link and Zelda, and she's the hero of her own game, which is the indie it was based off, the Crypt of the Necro Dancer, and in the opening movie, Vati, uh, I mean, uh, redubbed Octavo, clearly here, defeats Link and Zelda, and he, pa he casts this curse on Hyrule, which basically just transformed the Legend of Zelda into the Crypt of the Necro Dancer. From there, after a quick tutorial, your adventure begins, and you can choose either Link or Zelda. And, of, you know, later on in the game, you know, I guess this is a spoiler, but you can always switch between the two, and even Cadence herself. But the only real difference, if you're wondering how what happens, like, oh, I have to play a Zelda, I have to play a Link file. The only real difference between that is a, a few bit of text, like you meet Impa, uh, Link sleeping, and just the way the shield mechanic works. Like, Link has a bit of, it's technically easier, I would say, because he could leave his shield out and constantly defend against long-range attacks. But Zelda has a has Nero's Love, which is, you know, her neutral special in Smash. And it's cool because if you time it perfectly, you can reflect enemy attacks. If not, it'll just defend one Cadence later. So after that, you'll be hopping all through Hyrule, following the Cadence and the beats, because, you know, that's, that's what the game's about. But, yeah. Obviously, the first thing anyone who plays this will talk first and foremost is about the music and the amazing remix. Uh, the amazing remix is the team uh, behind Cadence of Hyrule has given its players. Every me remix, be it the title theme, Gerudo Valley, Death Mountain, all of it, all of it is just a pleasure to listen to. I honestly, I, I enjoyed every single remix in the game. My personal favorites were the title theme and, and Gerudo Valley, but. Things from Kakariko Village, Lost Woods, every, a Fairy Fountain. I I enjoyed every bit of it. I honestly have always enjoyed Zelda music, and I do occasionally listen to it when I have the chance. Like you know, some from Twilight Princess, like you know the Hyrule Field theme, a few from Ocarina of Time, and just to hear each of these classic themes kind of remixed in a uh, I don't want to say in a modern kind of way, but remixed in a way where it's something I never thought I would hear Zelda music done like this unless it was like you know like a fan hip-hop dj kind of style uh it's very cool to hear and honestly I, I i recommend people to listen to the original soundtrack or when they play the game kind of have the music volume up a lot and keep the sound effects a bit lower it's just it's so well done and there's so much passion behind it i can see why nintendo reached out to this indie company to do something like this with their you know with the zelda ip of like a golden ip the, main, uh, the map in the style of this game is a rhythm roguelike, and so you collect items along the map like pieces of hearts, potions, rupees, keys, and scrolls. Um, key items in this game are diamonds. Um, so what you get from diamonds is when you defeat every enemy in an area, and you're not trapped to octavos, octa uh, octavos, I call them octavo, uh, getting my vowels mixed up here, but uh, octavos 
cadence. So each area is mapped certainly to a beat, and until you beat every enemy, you have to follow the beat, which is what that uh, that little bar you see below in most of the most of the screens I'm showing you. That little beat is the cadence that you have to follow until you defeat every enemy. Once you do that, you're technically free from the beat, but you still hop around everywhere. By free roaming, you can kind of discover and realize that each area has its own puzzles and dungeons, and that's what makes this game so great. It has that Zelda feel where almost every area in the map has a secret to it. Uh, it could be, you know, trying to solve a puzzle for a piece of a heart in like the northwest area, you know, above, you know, above the Lost Woods. You want, like, it gives you that feeling that you want to collect everything and you want to search for each secret. Uh, there's a lot of, there's, I'd say about 90% of every tile has a dungeon in it. You know, every enemy you defeat, the more diamonds you collect, which you'll realize diamonds, while they do come in abundancy, they are very important later on in endgame. And, you know, just the feeling of getting every item is like a very good feel in this. It has that link to the past kind of feel where you open up your menu and you look at it and you want to kind of fill in every spot just to be like, oh, I have everything. Like, ha I, I don't think I used half the items. I, I, I honestly think I used mainly the hook shot and the boomerang, you know, and the bow and arrow for most of my stuff. But of course I want the, you know, the war of drum or the drum of beat. I forgot the exact name. It was like, well, you know, the very first time I've ever seen this item. But I was like, I need it. I don't think I've ever used it, but this game gives you that sense where you need to get everything. And I think that's what makes it such a great game. And the other, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is why I do say it's a roguelike. And so once you die, you know, you respawn in a completely, you know, in your startup area with either Link or Zelda and you lose all your items. So you lose your keys, you lose your rupees, you lose your gear. Uh, when you lose your gear, I mean, I mean to say is you lose your boots and you lose like, you know, your gloves and stuff to which give you stat enhancements. But it's more of like Majora's Mask, so you keep all your main items. Meanwhile, like in most roguelikes, if you die, you kind of lose everything and all your stats. So you'll lose your, you know, your potions, but you don't lose your hookshot is the, the simplest way I could say it. The concept's very addicting because each map has its own unique sub-dungeon, different to different tactics to every approach, and unique enemies. So when I'm looking at it, I can see different bobbikins, I can see, you know, Deku scrubs. I see every kind of enemy being different from, uh, being different from each other and in a different style, which is really cool because while there's a lot of RNG randomness to it, I can help out my friend. However, he can't exactly look at my game and go, oh, I need to do this to get that. No, our maps are all shuffled between each other. So you can't really look at a guide and go, oh, I have to go to, you know, three paces west and two paces north to do this. No. While mine may be at that point, yours may be at a different area. So the entire game is the same, but at the same time, it's shuffled around. So it gives everyone kind of a sense of their own challenge where you can only give hints. You can't really solve things for other people. But what sold this game on me um, being my indie game of the year is honestly the style it's presented. It was, as I was saying before, it gives me that Link to the Past vibe, but it also it was like Minish Cap meets Link to the Past, meets a new game. So it had that new, it has updated sprites. It has, you know, uh, it reminded me of like a 32-bit, like maximum Zelda, okay? It was like, if, Link, if Minish Cap got upgraded today, this is probably what it would look like, or every 2D Game Boy Zelda game, it would look like this, which is like an awesome style because I honestly, I really kind of enjoy the art style of gameplay style of, um, of The Legend of Zelda, uh, Link to the Past, uh, Link's Awakening, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, all this. And to see this, uh, see some of their items in their 2D uh, debut, it just, it, you know, it, it kind of hit like the fanboy in me, and I think that was the best part about it. Uh, I, everything about the game was great, except for one thing, which was Rock's Cape, which they redubbed Rito's Feather, and it was such a bad, useless item, it made me sad. But I'm willing to forgive that because Link's Awakening HD is coming out. So I'm a nice guy, Nintendo. I only subtracted an entire point based off one item. So uh, besides that, mini games in each town were fun. They brought back Bomb to Bowling. You know, they have the Bone Arrow games. And I'd say probably the best part is just there's so much replayability in this game and so much discovery to be found that the game is more than, you know, just going through it once. Like it gives you the sense where you want everything. You want to get the 100%. You want to play maybe the Zelda story. You want to get the secret unlockable character that I won't spoil for you. And there's just different styles to it. You know, there's, you know, you don't have to just play the story mode. There is like a single play mode. There is 
Uh, I forgot the exact name of the mode, but there was another one where it, oh, they had permadeath mode, etc., stuff like that. So they wanted to give you different ways to, attack, you know, approach the game besides, uh, you know, the generic story mode. And, you know, considering its price value, I definitely recommend as this is not only a game for all Zelda fans, but a game that probably everyone who has a Switch should, you know, check out. Like, this is the game where it'll be like, oh man, I finished Odyssey, I finished Breath of the Wild, I have Mario Kart, etc., etc. What game should I get? And then the first thing on their minds that's not Shovel Knight is they should be getting Cadence of Hyrule. Then Cuphead. I'll put this second because Cuphead came out first for PC and stuff. So it's and, and this is Zelda, guys. Other than that, I didn't know what to expect going in this game, and I never watched any trailer. Uh, never knew the original game, and I gave it a shot. So that's my purpose of giving you guys this review for someone like me who's like, oh, I'm never gonna play this. Well, I did, and I'd say this game is nine out of ten. Go pick it up. I'm telling you. And if it's no good. Just complain in the YouTube comments, all right? I, I, I'll reimburse you with love and a comment back. Thank you, and have a good one.